Hi all, Shane here, Lana67, uh, another inbox review. Uh, this time we're looking at AFC's Club 1358 scale German U-boat type 7C. Um, so, since I'm speaking about some maritime, I need my pipe. So, uh, just a quick little bit of history about the, um, the 7Cs. So, uh, this um, type of U-boat, which was a German um, abbreviation for um, undersea boot, um, which underwater boat or underwater craft, uh, something known as U-boat. Um, so uh, these were the most numerous of all the U-boats that the uh, Kriegsmarine deployed during World War II. Uh, they came into service uh, pretty early on, about uh, 1940, they became, became to take serious um, operational strength. Uh, they were very popular with their crews, um, even as newer and more spacious um, U-boats were developed, uh, the crew still opted for these. Uh, it was more so due to its small size that it could dive much quicker than um, the other U-boats of the Type 9, six, um, uh, for example. So it could have like a full 30 second um, head start when it came to diving than the other ones, which was very important, especially later in the war when um, the Allies began to take anti-submarine actions very seriously and began to put greater and greater resources into um, sub-hunters and uh, um, aircraft such as um, the Sutherland and Catalinas that used to patrol almost around the clock looking for them. Um, so the 70 uh, is probably the iconic U-boat, the one that everyone thinks of, it's the same type boat that um, is depicted in Das Boot, even though it's a fictional craft in Das Boot, um, it is, uh, the, the type of submarine is in fact a uh, 7C. Uh, about, um, of all the, uh, the, the, the men who were lost in the U-boat Waffe, which was the submarine wing of the German Navy, um, about 77% of the fatalities or attritions were lost on these boats and that's about 22,000 men. Even with that high attrition rate, these boats were very successful. They, um, they would sink more shipping than every other um, Allied submarine combined. And that's just this single class of submarine, not including any other German classes. Um, so some basic technical data here, so the, the length of the, of the boat is uh, 67.2 metres, its beam is 6.2 metres, its draft is 8.9 or, or 4.8 metres, displacement surfaced is uh, 759 tonnes, it's 860 tonnes submerged, um, its speed is 17 knots surfaced and 7.6 knots su um, submerged. Its uh, endurance is 6,500 nautical miles surfaced and 80 miles submerged as it had to switch to its batteries while underwater so it could only have X amount of hours running under, under the water until it had to surface to recharge its batteries. Its power plant is two um, 140 horsepower diesels, uh, or sorry 1400 horsepower diesels and with by two um, 350 uh, BHP electric motors, had five torpedo tubes, four in the bow, one in the stern, had a single 88 millimeter gun on the deck, and a single 20 millimeter 20 millimeter flak. Um, these guns in later models were up gun to a 105, and then as newer submarine types came out, they were completely removed as it was just too dangerous to um, surface and use them. Um, we also see with the Trum uh, 2s, the Type uh, 741s and or 44s and 43s, that the Cunning Tower begins to change and more and more anti-aircraft armaments are added as, a, as an attempt to counter the aerial threat. Also uh, an interesting note was one of the reasons why so many U-boats were lost was 
the British uh, counterintelligence had broken the Enigma using the ultra code breaking machines. And this was something that um, Dornit, who was the commander of the U-boat corps of the, of the Navy, was completely unaware of until after the war. And he often, he used to micromanage his boats, so he was always asking for um, update reports on the locations of his boats. And though a lot of time, by the time the information was decoded and passed down to actual destroyers hunting these submarines, the boats were long gone. But on several occasions, the British were able to use their convoys basically as bait to draw out several wolf packs into a, a massive ambush, and they sank um, quite a few of them in one in one occasion. So um, the fact that their their intelli their security being compromised really did not help the attrition rate of these crews, and even right up until the end of the war even with all the men they were losing, um, volunteers for the U-Boat Corps or the U-Boat Waffa was constant. Um, they were very much the iconic um, symbol of the Navy and many people still wanted to join it, even with the 85% attrition rate that these men had. Basically, ne the, only, the only wings of any service really that had the same type of attrition rates were the bomber crews of the um, American and British um, air forces that were bombing Germany at the time, or later on in the war especially. So um, that's a little bit of a history ramble. So we'll have a look in the kit. So we get our normal um, little spiel here to saying how great uh, this new model is. So it's new tooling hull parts. Guns can be assembled in flat fire elevated positions, which they can't by the way, but alright. Um, precisely replicate details on the vessel. Yeah, you can waterline or full hull display. Option of photo etch parts, which is very nice. Um, reference number for this kit is SE73503. Um, so say when it's released. It's probably there somewhere. And also on a cool note, on the back of the box, we have the entire box art without any of the logo. So you could cut this out and frame it, which I'm going to probably do because I really like the U-boats. And for anyone who's interested in submarine warfare or U-boat warfare, um, I know Jim is because uh, me and Jim were speaking briefly about it. Uh, this is a great book. I would strongly recommend it. This is The Wolf Pack, the story of the, of the U-boat in World War II by uh, Gordon Will uh, Williamson. This is basically, and it's published by Osprey. Fabulous book, goes into um, a lot of detail of every boat, the U-boat pins, the, in the induction and training of the crews, their uniforms, the weapons carried, and other technical um, improvements. Very good, well worth it. Okay, so let's have a look. I'll also take pictures of the kit parts at the end of this as well and show them to you. So we get our we get three bags of sprues. Um, so we have um, two medium sprues, one small one, and the upper hull, which is loose. But we'll have a look at them in a moment. Instructions. Instructions are very simple. So a little bit of history here. Uh, we have our colour callouts for Hobby Colour, Mr. Colour, Mr. Colour Spray, Humbrel, Revel and Life Colour. So a nice little selection. Um, it's a six stage um, assembly. Um, instructions are quite clear and non- um, they're not they're not too busy, which is nice. Really not much to speak about. Gives you the option of keeping of adding or leaving off the wire net or the um, the anti-submarine net cutters. Um, 
As early as 1940, the crews began to remove these because, um, well, one, to reduce drag of the boat in the water, and also the fact was not many crews would even dare try to uh, use that to cut their way through uh, an anti-submarine net. It's a good way of getting fouled. On the back, we have um, our painting um, call-outs. They actually give you the the uh, the German designations of the colours, so um, which is nice. So you can go and um, match them up, which is nice. And we also have decals for U96, which is um, really famous for its swordfish insignia. We have U558 and U201, and the the decals for the um, boat's mascot is included, which is nice. So again, nice instructions, not really to get too excited about. So we'll have a look at the sprues. So here's the main lower hull, which is waterline, so you can um, model this uh, in a diorama if you wish to at sea. We also get a pressurised hull, which is a nice addition, it's nice as included, but it's completely unnecessary because you will not see any of that once the uh, the hull or the upper hull is buttoned up. Uh, it's here 20 millimeter. I think it's a flat 38. I think. Um, I, I might be wrong on that one. I should consult the book. Uh, again, very nicely detailed. Incredibly fragile. Um, care needs to be taken while removing that from its uh, from its sprue gates. Detail is quite nice. I'm not seeing any flash, which is very impressive for such small plastic moulding of this scale. Not seeing any pin marks either. Um, we have raised detail on the hull, which is accurate because these are welded together. So don't be sanding them off and engraving them, uh, being correct. So very nice detail. The drainage um, ports are not um, hollow, so you might want to drill them out. So they are recessed enough that a wash will give a good impression of that too. Um, they can be a little bit awkward to drill out because of the shape of them. So again that's the first sprue which is the, the, the large bag. Then we have the second smaller sprue. So we have our display case, uh, our, our display stand, very simple. Uh, the tiny propellers, the outboard propellers, our periscopes. Um, again, nice detailing, very, very fragile stuff, I have to say. Um, so care will be needed while removing these from the sprues, or you will snap things and you will hate your life. Uh, the ATA is a little bit basic, but more than adequate for the scale. Um, there's no way to point super detail in that, anyway, you'll go blind. Then we have the G7 torpedoes. Or the GA7 torpedoes, or sorry, G7A torpedoes, which were the mainstay of the um, of the uh, the torpedoes used. Um, they were basically improved versions of the torpedoes they used in World War One. Um, big problem with them was that they used compressed air as their propellant, and that left the wake. But um, they came up with a newer, improved version that used an electric motor that left no wake, so um, it kept the boat's position concealed. And they also came up with a, um, another torpedo called the FAT torpedo that was used for um, taking on uh, the columns of of the convoy. And what to do is this type of torpedo would would sail through until it got to the the preset range, and then it would start going into an um, it would start to swim S shape. And the whole idea is even if it missed its original target, it would hit the boats left or right of it. Very clever. Um, so uh, these are just your standard torpedoes. Anchors are included, the dive planes, rudders. Very nice actually I have to say. And then the last bag is a very thin sprue including the boat's title, Type 7 CU boat. Nice, no nonsense. Very, very delicate plastic uh, guide rails for the upper hull. Um, these are actually quite nice. Now, here's my only criticism with this kit. 
Now, you're not going to see this, but the cunning tower is in two halves, which means you're going to have a seam line. I am not a big fan of this. I know they can be moulded in one piece, because that's what Hobby Boss does with their one 350th scale U-boats. So, um, I'm not too sure why AFV Club couldn't mould it in one piece. I think it was to probably do with costs. Keep the cost of this down. We also get a photo etch um, set. Very small little fret. Uh, we get the actual um, antenna uh, or the uh, the fouling lines, which is nice. Uh, they will be flat, so you may want to replace that with, um, with with fishing line if you wish, or any type of rigging line you may or may not use. Uh, we have other little details, including the railings, the onboard radar, um, and also the uh, oh, what you call it. Uh, the, the guard on what used to call the winter garden or the finta garden which is German for back garden that's the area of the cunning tower where the anti-aircraft weapon is uh, I've tried using this before it is very difficult to shape so um, I use the plastic part for this but um, again if you're good with photo etch you should find it find this um, not a problem also uh, you have a small little um, decal sheet with the uh, boat symbols like the different mascots such as the uh, the swordfish for U96 so very nice detail and then the upper hoe is very nicely detailed a lot of um, finely engraved detail um, on the top surface where all the drainage um, channels are, are well depicted we also have nice raised detail for the wells of the saddle tanks, which are the ballast tanks here. So very, very nice. And the detail on the cunning tower is very nice as well, very crisp. So this is very impressive for a model of this size. I need to actually think about that's how big the U-boat shall be. And wait you compare when I compare this to the U or the I um, 58 that we've I built on the channel not too long ago you'll be actually surprised just how small the German boats were, they were, they were actually quite um, they were quite diminutive compared to some of the other nations such as Japan and America's boats now I'll just show you one last thing that I picked up that is somewhat um, related to this I also picked up um, um, Eduard's, there we go Andy I said it correctly um, one 350 scale Kriegsmarine um, crew members. These are done in the uh, in the Zoom photo etch, so they are fully coloured. Uh, we get guys in a fair in a variety of um, uniforms uh, and uh, in various different poses. So I'll be using these to um, to populate my my U-boat's bridge and its after deck. Um, I'm going to model my, my U-boat when I get around to it uh, that the lads are presenting or parading as they uh, leave or enter port and I'll be using the, the chaps in the you can't really see it all can you? No. but there's uh, guys in the black overalls which is more closer to the what the U-boat lads would have worn um, so yeah, there we have it so I'll take some pictures of the various details of this and the AFE Club submarine, and I will. You can have a look for yourselves. And uh, also, um, anyone is still interested in doing the uh, Wolfpack group build, uh, do let me know. Um, so we'll do it sometime in the new year, and uh, should be a lot of fun. So thank you for watching. I've rambled on for a very long time, but I hope you found this interesting. And as you can tell, I quite I'm quite passionate about about this element of history. I always like my naval history, so. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching, stay safe, happy modelling, and watch out for those buses.